This is an auction by the famous British auction house Sotheby's. And they're selling this vampire killing kit for at least $20,000. And it's fake. At least, that is to say, it's not an authentic historical vampire killing kit because they never existed. There is some discussion as to actually how to classify these particular objects since they're not technically fakes insofar as they are not fraudulent copies of an original since no originals ever existed. But insofar as they are represented falsely as objects with an authentic past, then they are fraudulent. So how do Sotheby's get away with this, even though they know that what they're selling isn't really authentic? Well, it's all about the wording. They call it, quote, an extensive vampire killing kit chest, continental, circa 1900s and later, end quote. That phrase, 1900s and later, is doing a lot of heavy lifting. They are implicitly avoiding placing a distinct date on this object. If it's later discovered that this was made in the 1970s, 80s, or even the last 10 years, they're totally covered. Notice as well the wording down here, quote, as stated in the catalogue description, some of the items are later additions, end quote. Later than what exactly? Later than the 1900s? That could be anything from 1901 to the present day. So it's pretty clear what Sotheby's are doing here, and they know it. But what I'm really interested in in this video is showing you how you can know that these kits are inauthentic. Now, it is true that some of them are better than others, but a lot of them are very low quality and have some glaring errors. First of all, if you see a kit with one of these in it, and it's supposedly dated to anything after about 1840, then you know it's fraudulent. This style of firing mechanism was pretty much superseded by percussion caps in about the mid-19th century. You can differentiate it from a percussion cap by looking carefully at the elements. This is the hammer, and normally in here there would be a small piece of flint, a piece of metal which is used to make a spark which can ignite the gunpowder held here in the pan, which in turn ignites the gunpowder in the breech, exploding and propelling the bullet out of the muzzle. This is the frizzen, which is struck by the flint in order to create the spark which ignites the gunpowder in the pan. This frizzen spring allows the frizzen to be snapped down to cover the pan to keep it secured from inclement weather. Now, something else that many people don't know is the number of pieces of equipment required to actually use and maintain these firearms. In order to load, prime and fire this pistol, you're going to need a lot of equipment. You're going to need your ball, which is the projectile, primer, black powder, which is your gunpowder, a patch or wadding, which is a piece of cloth used to create a tight seal inside the barrel, some lubricant, a ramrod, a thin piece of metal used to push the wadding and the ball down the muzzle into the breech inside the barrel, and a flint so that you can actually fire the gun. All of those pieces of equipment are going to need to be in your vampire killing kit if you want to use this pistol repeatedly. The issue is, most vampire killing kits totally omit any of this equipment. That's one of the reasons why you know they're ahistorical. Now have a look at this photo. This shows you what an actual 19th century pistol kit would look like. And just look at all the equipment. We can see that originally this had four pistols. The two larger pistols and two of these smaller pistols. There's a small flask here which holds the gunpowder used to pour down into the barrel. Here's our ramrod to push the wadding and the ball down the barrel into the breech. We also have a number of cleaning tools, in particular for removing impediments from the barrel and clearing it out. We can see here there's an item missing, probably a pair of pincers, like pliers. This small container here possibly contained lubricant in order to make the ball travel more smoothly through the barrel. Then we have two small compartments here, and I can guess what they are. You might notice that these are not flintlock pistols. In fact, they're the later percussion cap design. You can see they have a hammer here, which isn't designed for holding a flint. It's simply designed for striking what's called a percussion cap. 
a small metal cap with some explosive propellant built into it, and it fits over this piece here called the nipple. This is a much simpler and more reliable design than the flintlock. However, as you can see, it still requires quite a lot of loading equipment because the loading process and the cleaning process is essentially the same. So what we still need for these guns is firstly percussion caps to place here on the nipple, which ignites the propellant inside the breech, and we need our ball, the projectile or bullet. So I'm guessing that underneath one of these covers here is a small collection of percussion caps, and underneath the other one is a small collection of pistol balls. Notice also how very closely aligned the cutouts are to the objects they are surrounding. There's an excellent use of space, and the wood has been cut out very closely to match the exact shape of the objects being held, and the felt follows very closely the outline of these objects. There's no wasted space, and everything is extremely neat. You will see also that the felt is quite obviously old and shows clear signs of usage, especially in the areas here where the objects have rubbed up against the felt. You will notice how remarkably different this is to the presentation in modern so-called vampire killing kits. Now let's go back to that kit sold by Sotheby's and I'll show you some features which really don't make any sense. Let's start with the pistol down here. It's an extremely basic and very simple percussion lock pistol. It looks incredibly cheap and very low quality. But how are you going to fire and maintain it? There's almost nothing here which looks like the equipment you're going to need. We do have here a set of pincers, which is appropriate, and we can guess this is probably supposed to be a gunpowder flask, at least that makes sense. These are most likely supposed to be the pistol balls, although it doesn't look like they're made of lead, and it looks like they've been slightly cut for some reason. They certainly don't look authentic. Where's the rest of the equipment that we need for maintaining this pistol? There's no sign of any wadding, there's no ramrod, there's no lubricant, and there aren't any percussion caps. And if these are supposed to be the pistol balls, well, I don't know what you're supposed to do after you've fired four shots, since that's an extremely small number of bullets. These leather straps everywhere look very odd to me. Some of them look like they're basically recycled dog collars. You can see places where they look like they've had stitching removed. And some of them look like they've been hand cut or at least hand trimmed. Very few of them look like they've seen any real wear. For example, they don't seem to be twisted or stretched in ways indicating they've been repeatedly fastened and unfastened. A number of these items look like they've been thrown in more or less for the look. There's an old Bible, quite likely an authentic item, but it's had a crucifix stuck on it, which doesn't really make sense. That's certainly not a 19th century style. There are a couple of other crucifixes here for... No particular reason. I don't know why you would bother having this since it looks like it's designed to be sat on a table with this very heavy base. And I wouldn't be at all surprised if this was actually made from acrylic. It certainly doesn't look like glass. These small glass jars look like they contain salt, vinegar, and possibly a kind of spice or seed. There's no apparent reason for any of these to be here, especially since 19th century vampire literature doesn't mention anything like this. This very small object here looks like it could be a knife, and again, it looks like this cross has been simply stuck on for show. But exactly what you would do with this is totally unclear. It looks very impractical to use with one hand, and it certainly looks too shallow to be very dangerous. Likewise, these stakes look incredibly inadequate. You could just about get one hand around them, and the points are very, very short. The candles are tied together with a piece of twine, but they're just thrown in here without any fastener, so they're just bouncing around, which is highly unlikely. They also have a suspiciously uniform shape with very sharp edges at the end, suggesting they are of modern manufacture. This here looks like a military ceremonial weapon in a decorative sheath. And again, we have to wonder, what is this actually for? From the curve of the handle, 
it's clearly designed to be held in only one hand and thrust forward. It's probably a 19th century piece, but it certainly looks more ceremonial than functional. And exactly how it's supposed to help when you're fighting a vampire, I really don't know. There are more assorted religious objects here. Again, they look like they've just been thrown in for decoration. A couple more crucifixes. One, ironically, with a skull and crossbones on it, which certainly doesn't look very religious. A tiny little booklet of something which isn't clear. A couple of long vials with, again, some liquid in them, which doesn't look particularly practical. A pair of scissors with, again, a cross on it for some reason. A rosary and a small icon, which, again, looks suspiciously modern. Notice in particular how this box doesn't look like it was designed for any of these objects. They really do look like they've been thrown in here rather haphazardly and then fastened down with these leather straps. I also have the feeling that the box and some of the items have received a wood stain treatment because the colour tones and wood grain on some of these items look suspiciously similar. And just look at these stakes. You could probably get one hand around the grip here, but the point is ridiculously shallow and... If this darkened end is supposed to indicate that they've been used and dramatically stained with blood, then I'm really suspicious about exactly how they could have been used. People don't seem to be aware of exactly how many layers of clothing people typically wore in 19th century Europe. A man, for example, would have an undershirt, then a shirt, then a waistcoat, then a jacket, then an overcoat, for a total of five layers of clothing, three of them cotton or linen, two of them wool. And given how ridiculously blunt these spikes are, there is absolutely no way you're getting them through all those layers. Even if you did, exactly what are you achieving with such a shallow wound? You would barely get past the ribcage. And why would you be using a wooden mallet which very clearly doesn't have a lot of mass? If you're trying to hammer nearly blunt wooden spikes through several layers of cloth, you're going to need a much heavier mallet with a metal head. And again, this looks very fabricated. What's the point of these metal bands here? No obvious reason at all. This mallet doesn't even look very functional for the intended purpose. In comparison to the authentic gun kit we saw, this entire box looks incredibly crude, and definitely not something that an aristocrat or wealthy 19th century traveller would purchase to protect themselves from vampires in foreign countries. Now let's look at this one, which is rather more clever because it's actually using more authentic items. However, it's the presence of those authentic items which really does give the game away. First of all, we can see that the pistols look like they're in a box which is actually made for them. Let's take a closer look. Yes, these are genuine percussion pistols. There's a pair of them, and they look like they're in a box which is absolutely made for them. Note again how careful the wooden cutout is. Note again how closely the felt matches the wooden cutout. These tubes possibly contain musket balls. These empty spaces here may have included patches or wadding. This flask quite likely contained gunpowder. This looks like it's the handle of a ramrod with a detachable rod. This case here may contain percussion caps or bullets, and I believe the cross has been added. This glass jar here may have contained lubricant. And it looks like this entire tray fits neatly into the box. Very likely underneath here, in this section, we would have some of the longer and more bulky items such as the ramrod and other cleaning items. Exactly what we have now is completely unclear. These don't look like particularly religious items, and they don't look very functional for fighting vampires. Again, we see a mallet which looks incredibly inadequate. It's wooden again. For some reason, people seem to like putting non-functional wooden mallets into vampire kits. And just look at how flimsy that handle is. A couple of strong blows, and that part's going to just snap right off. It's unclear what this is, but it seems to be some kind of spike. It looks like it's been very crudely cut with a knife, and quite recently too, 
since the stain on the outside doesn't match the color of the wood on the inside. And if this is supposed to be a spike for putting through a vampire, I'd say good luck because you're probably not going to get very far with that, especially if it's made from wood. We have a couple of what may have been fasteners or clips up here, but they're not holding anything. It looks like something was originally stuck here with glue, which has been removed. And it definitely looks like this crucifix has actually been stuck here with glue, meaning it's not removable, so I don't see what the point is. A hinge or lock mechanism was probably originally here, but has been removed or broken off. It looks like it's supposed to fit into these holes here. This looks like a candle. I'm not even sure what this is. And there's a small kind of a booklet here. This is probably an old Bible. We have some documents here which we can't read, but it doesn't really matter. We can see that they've given a semblance of reality with the pistol kit down the bottom. The mirror here is probably used to identify vampires who apparently do not cast a reflection in the mirror. And as usual, we have another rather badly made crucifix with a stylized skull and bones underneath. This small packet here may be a box of matches or something else. So a slightly better kit, but again, once we look closely, it just doesn't make sense. Sometimes you see kits which are just such a mess, they're really obviously fake. Very often, you can tell them by the container which has been used. In this case, it's very clear somebody is repurposing a musical instrument case, very likely a violin, viola, or perhaps some kind of small guitar. You'll notice here a feature which is quite common with the very cheap kits, and that is the presence of these little ties, sometimes twine, sometimes wire, and sometimes small strips of leather. It shouldn't take very long to realize that this is an extremely cumbersome and impractical way of securing objects. Who really wants to untie all those little knots and then retie them afterwards? And how many ties do you really need to secure this knife? And while we're at it, let's take a look at this knife. It's incredibly inadequate. It has a paper thin blade with an extremely small edge, which doesn't even look sharp. It has no distal or profile taper, and it's clearly designed for cutting. It's probably good enough for butter, and that's about it. You can't stab with it because it has a dropped point, and it's completely curved at the front. These stakes are about as sharp as crayons, and you would have difficulty thrusting those through cardboard. This looks like a small ceremonial urn for containing ashes, which might be useful, I guess, if you want to keep the remnants of the vampire you vanquished. Again, we have another very old looking and completely inadequate wooden mallet. I don't even know why it's in absolutely appalling condition and it doesn't look like it's strong enough to break an egg. If these are supposed to be glass vials with something inside them, it's totally unclear what they are or why they would be useful. These are probably candles, again, just tied very haphazardly here. It seems someone's just trying to fill up space. Again, we have a mirror, which I'll remind you is supposedly for finding vampires, a very haphazardly tied rosary, and frankly, there's no way anybody would secure an object like a rosary in such a casual fashion. This is probably supposed to be a leather book, but frankly, it looks like it's made from cardboard or paper, which has been painted to look like leather. It has a strap with a hole in it, which doesn't make sense because this obviously isn't being held with a buckle. There's a small ceremonial bell for no particular reason, a couple of very crude crucifixes, another much larger crucifix, a very large cross as opposed to a crucifix for no particular reason, two very small cups and a couple of glass vials of red liquid. It's unclear what the key is for, though if it's made from iron, it would very likely have a ceremonial or magical function. Overall, this looks incredibly bad. Here's a similarly bad one, this one hilariously advertised as using a coffin, which it very clearly isn't. It's a slightly better job than the previous one, since there has been an effort made to make things look like they belong here. In particular, there are some cutouts in the felt, and instead of crude leather or twine ties, we have these little metal swivels. However, some of these cuts look a little bit crude and even a little bit new. And I suspect this backing may have been placed into this box, especially because it doesn't actually meet up at 
all with the edges of the interior. The knife looks sort of mystical and has these suitably strange symbols on it, but I can tell at a glance it's incredibly blunt and I don't know what you're supposed to achieve by stabbing a vampire with it. Again, we have our traditional extremely bad wooden mallet with highly inadequate wooden stakes, complete with squared edges, which would be even more difficult to hammer into a body, especially with such an inadequate mallet. Now, to give them credit, this person has actually made an attempt to add a good-looking firearm. It's a percussion cap pistol, and we could argue that this is the powder flask. This may have contained the lubricant, and this, if it's not simply an upended bowl, may contain bullets, although that's fairly generous. This, if it's a container, may include wadding. But of course, we can see there are other pieces of equipment totally missing. There's no ramrod and there's no cleaning equipment. You can't actually use this, nor are there any percussion caps visible, unless they're supposed to be in here. Regardless, we can't actually use this pistol with the items provided. Again, we have a couple of old and nondescript looking books, which could be anything. And finally, we have an old looking crucifix, which looks extremely crude. Nothing like what we would expect a wealthy 19th century traveler to spend money on. Overall, another very poor effort. This one's a rather better effort. We can see that the box does look original and looks like it has the original felt too. Notice how the felt does go to the edges all the way around very neatly. And we can see these indentations here are clearly accommodating these handles. It looks like there's a percussion cap pistol here. And yes, it looks like there's enough equipment here to use it. And it seems this pistol tray lifts out. It also looks like these small metal swivels are authentic, although it's very likely these items are not original. From the indentations, we can see that this crucifix doesn't exactly match what was here originally. These icons may or may not be original, and it's not really clear enough whether this additional cross is original. Again, we have a rosary just thrown haphazardly into a corner here. Certainly not what we would expect. And another small urn, again for no apparent reason. Notice how crosses are on pretty much everything. Not actually very authentic Victorian style, especially for Protestant churches. Again, we have another incredibly inadequate wooden mallet and a glass jar with nothing in it in particular. Now we actually have another photo of this same kit and you can see from these photos how they've attempted some realism by including an original pistol box. And again, notice from the equipment here just how much you need to maintain one of these percussion pistols. Here you can see a small area for the bullets, the vial for the gunpowder. This would probably have originally contained the wadding or the lubricant. We have a piece of cleaning equipment here and we have a pair of pincers. Some of the other pistol cleaning equipment very likely occupied this lower tray. Again, we have another highly inadequate looking knife, which looks like it's good for bread and butter and nothing else. And look at these spikes. Again, they're made from wood and it's completely unclear what they're designed for. They have very blunt points and you should be able to see that this grip is designed so you can get your hand around it. And then the very large top is wide enough to make it easy to hit with a mallet but you need to remember that in order for this spike to work, if you're hammering into a body, it has to pass through your hand. And that's going to be very difficult to do if you have something above your hand, which is much wider than your hand. There's a small bottle here thrown into an area too large for it. This again looks like that small urn. This may be original and possibly could have contained percussion caps. And again, another very old and bad looking crucifix. Now, this is quite a clever one because it looks a lot more modern. It looks very unified in its presentation and it has a lot of equipment which may seem at first glance to make sense. You'll notice it has a percussion cap revolver, quite modern. We're talking mid to late 19th century. And it has a pair of pincers and it looks like a flask for gunpowder. Very possibly wadding balls and lubricant are contained in these small areas. And this small container is quite likely an actual authentic percussion cap tin. So they've done a fairly good job for a start. 
However, there are a couple of things that stand out and I'll come back to them in a minute. The first red flag should be our good friend, the highly inadequate wooden mallet. Again, it looks like it has nowhere near enough mass to drive these very large stakes. And notice how the stakes have twine on them for grip, meaning this is designed to stop them sliding through your hands. That's the opposite of what you want if you're trying to drive them through a body. You absolutely need them to slip through your hands so that they can enter the body. These small cross-shaped stakes look incredibly inadequate. They would be very difficult to hammer anywhere and you obviously can't thrust them into the body with your hands. The telltale pieces of twine here are another indication that this is definitely inauthentic. And we see the twine again here with the predictably incredibly inadequate knife. And we see a couple of leather straps here which don't look very functional. Notice the spelling of vampire here. That's actually an authentic spelling used in the 19th century. Vampire was spelt either with an I or a Y, so that's not necessarily inauthentic. However, the cover of this book looks incredibly anachronistic. The iconography looks very modern, and the cover doesn't look anything like the typical cover of a Victorian-era publication. In particular, the word handbook doesn't really make a lot of sense. In the Victorian era, a handbook was typically much thicker than this. 50 pages or more. Additionally, the standard title convention for a handbook used the word handbook first. Handbook of X or a handbook of X or the handbook of X. Certainly not X handbook. This kind of thin publication was much more likely to be referred to as a booklet or even a pamphlet. There's some text here which is a little unclear, but I know what it says from having looked up the information about this particular kit. And of course, it's completely fraudulent. Not only is it in a highly anachronistic modern typeface, which was not used in the 19th century, but it uses wording and margin justification, which are totally anachronistic. Of course, we have a mysterious bottle with unidentified contents, a compulsory crucifix, which doesn't look particularly expensive, a book which is probably supposed to be a Bible, and a piece of unidentified equipment here. A number of bottles of undetermined contents, and it looks like this tray is designed to lift out. Now, while we're here, I want to focus on these small wooden swivels. Remember, we have seen metal swivels on boxes which were very likely authentic Victorian boxes, but these big, chunky, bulky wooden swivels look totally out of place. Notice also all of the felt here looks suspiciously new with very clean edges. And I suspect some glue's been used here. In particular, you will see that wherever there are swivels, there are absolutely no wear marks where the swivels could have been used. So either this entire felt has been replaced in the modern era or much more likely, it's completely unoriginal to the box. And getting back to that felt, remember how we've seen that authentic Victorian era pistol cases in particular had extremely neat and closely formed cutouts for the objects they were holding, especially the pistols? Look at these very blocky rectilinear lines, extremely crude. Nothing like the shapely curves and efficient use of space that we've seen in authentic Victorian gun boxes. Of course, we don't have a ramrod and the other cleaning equipment is also missing, so you wouldn't really be able to use this pistol effectively. There are more strange vials down here, again fastened with a wooden swivel, which looks like it has never been moved. Notice again how there's a curious mixture of very new looking objects and very old looking objects. I also suspect that this wood has all been treated with the same stain. See how the grain pattern looks suspiciously similar. I think this has been painted onto a lot of these objects, suggesting again, this is modern fabrication. So the next time you see one of these vampire killing kits online, now you'll not only know that they are all inauthentic, and you can see the links in the video description to find out more about their curious real history, but you'll also know how to detect them for yourself.